Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial and right now we are going to take a look at a different loop which is called, which is called the while true loop or while loop. Basically there are different types of this loop whether they are infinite or not we are going to cover both of them in this tutorial. I will show you different examples for this actual loop, how you can use it, what you can do with it and where you can use it as well. So open up your idle right here. Let us open it up. Uh, let us try to code it right here. If it gives us some syntax error, we will just open up a real program or notepad or something like that and we will code the program there. So first of all, while loop is most likely always going to be used with the boolean values. There are a bunch of these. You will see in different programs there are a bunch of while true loops. Basically a while true loop is a loop that is most likely going to be infinite until the value is changed or until the loop is broken out of. Now what I mean by that is basically uh, if you type while true, so while true, let me just show you and add two dots and you just type here print hello. Let's imagine what this will actually do. So while true and true is always true, you can't change true to be equal to false it will print hello. If I press here enter you can see it will print hello string forever which we don't really want. So let us control C this. As you can see if you control C it will print out keyboard interrupt which we actually want to do. If you didn't do this this would run forever. So same as that you can just type here something like while true and then uh, or let's do it something like this. So I will be equal Let me find equal. Okay, I will be equal to zero. So we set a variable i to have a value of zero. Then we will, what we will do is we are going to do something like this. So while true, let us increase i by one. So i equals i plus one. You can see nothing is really happening. There is nothing being printed out but we are also not getting these three arrows prompted back to us. That is why this is an, an actual while true loop and it will perform this forever until we actually perform a keyboard interrupt to this while true loop. It will increase the i which we set to be equal to zero for one every iteration. So what it does, it goes to this line, it performs this line, it sees that there is not another line in the actual loop, it goes to the beginning, it performs this line line again and it does that forever. So if I control C this and just type here print underscore i, you can see that the i now has a value of something around I believe 36 millions or even more 364 millions if I can count the digits well enough, probably can but doesn't even matter. So you can see the usage of a while true loop. Now I will show you in the next tutorials how you can actually escape a while true loop even though if it if, even though it is infinite without actually closing the program itself. So there is an actual statement or word that we can use that will help us do that. But for now on, let us check out what else we can do with the while loop. So it doesn't have to be a while true loop, it can also be while false loop. But then if you just type here something like this, while false e i equals to zero and you just press here enter you will see that nothing will get executed because while false is always false and it will not execute this loop therefore this actual loop has no meaning at all. So now that we checked out the while loop with the boolean values let us check out the while loop with normal values. So we're going to set our i variable back to zero. So it doesn't have this huge value to it. We will set it to be equal to zero. And what we are going to do is while i is greater or lesser than 100, for example. So let's do it like that. Then add the two dots. Let's see what we can actually do this. Do here. So we can just type it. We can just do something like this. So print i or let me just add a single quote. So i is still smaller than 100. And then 
we can add two spaces and plain and add the actual string of the i to the actual statement right here and close another bracket because we opened double brackets we also need to close double brackets uh, and also if we just run this this will also become an infinite loop because we are not increasing i anywhere if I just simply run this, it will print this statement forever. What we want to do, so it doesn't do that, we want to increase i by 10. So let's just do equal i plus 10. Oops. And if I run this, you can see it finishes relatively fast. It says i is still smaller than 100 and then it prints i right next to it. So we can see that i was smaller than 100 up to the 90. Then in the next iteration what this did is it checked out or let me just go from the beginning. So first of all i was 0. This then loop checked whether i is smaller than 100. It found out that i indeed is smaller than 100 and then it proceeded to execute the code in the while loop. It printed out this statement right here and then it increased i by 10. Now, then it performed that until the 90, then you can see that it checked out whether 90 is smaller than 100, it printed out 90 is smaller than 100, and then it increased i by 10. Then in the next loop, it checked out whether, uh, whether 100 is smaller than 100, it found out that 100 indeed isn't smaller than 100, and then it didn't proceed with the next statements in the while loop. But let me show you how you can actually change the output of this just by switching these two lines right here. Well, let me just think about it. Maybe it is not right here if we, 90 is more than 100. Yeah, let me show you like this. So what we will get right here is we will not have this statement right here. Instead of this statement, we will have a 100 statement, which will not be correct. Therefore, be careful which line you write first. So let me just show you if only I switch these two lines one with another, this statement will become different. So if I is smaller, first of all, let me set I to be equal to zero. And then if I is smaller than a hundred, pardon me, while I is smaller than a hundred. And then first of all, we will increase I. So I equals I plus 10. And then we will print i is still smaller than 100. We will add to, we will have to add the string of the i, so plus string of the i itself, whoops, close double brackets and press here enter. And you can see we get an entirely different output right now just by switching these two lines. Even though we perform the same code in both of them, you can see that right here we don't have this uh, line right here and we, instead of it, get the 100 printed out, which is not really correct. i is still smaller than 100, and then i is 100. That is not really correct. Therefore, be careful which line you write first. So first of all, write this line, and then increase it right afterwards, so it can go to the next loop. So let me just check out what else we need to cover. We can also show another example of the while loop. So let me just show you. It doesn't have to be while i is smaller than something. It can be, it doesn't also have to be while true or false. It can be while, uh, first of all, we set once again i to be equal to zero. We will reset it. And then while i is not equal, so we perform is not equal by specifying exclamation mark and then equal right here. So while i is not equal to the, for example, 100, what we want to do is basically let's do something like this. So i equals input. So we will prompt the user to input a number. Enter any number. So this could be something similar to the actual, actual password checking. So we just we are doing this in an infinite loop until the user actually specifies the correct number that specify in the program. So we're going to show you, I'm going to show you that in the, uh, right after this as well. So enter any number and then we can actually 
or we don't really need to print anything let us just enter right here so 92 we get prompted once again 23 33 and if i just type here 100 oops okay so 100 let us try something differently hi okay yeah we are got we got a string of 100 you know i remember i forgot to actually add i equals the integer of i so let us just rewrite this real quick so while i first of all set i to be equal to zero while i is not equal to 100 we want to perform the input function so i will be equal to input enter any number simple as that then we want to make i to be equal integer of i or you can actually do that in this line as well so you can do something like this integer out of the input you don't have to do it in a second line so let us delete this right here now since you're first of firstly encountering with something like this what this will do is it will perform the function inside first so it will prompt us to input this then it will turn it to integer and store it in i so let us see how this will work press enter 23 33 44 and then 100 and you can see once you specify 100 it checks out right here if i is equal if or pardon me if i is not equal to 100 then it sees i is equal to 100 therefore it will not perform this so this is another useful type of usage for the while true loop pardon me for the while loop where you simply check whether a certain value is not equal to another certain value now let's see how we can actually write this for the password so password will be equal uh, to for example let's use something else so right here we can use hello world so that is our password our standard good old hello world string so right now we want to enter a while true loop or not a while true so while well, let me just uh, double check this first of all okay so we can do something like this while inputted underscore password is not equal to the password we want to input we want to from the user so inputted underscore password uh, equals input enter password so let me just try right here input password is not defined yeah i thought so let me just go right here inputted underscore password equals or let's think about this maybe we can actually approach it with a different principle also using the if else statement let me just think about it yeah okay let me first of all try it like this enter password simple as that and then i enter the actual while true loop so let me just do it like this so hello hello will be our password and right now while inputted underscore password is not equal to password inputted underscore password will be equal to another input i'm just checking something out whether this will work or not not really sure we'll have to figure it out inputted password is not defined yeah because we actually called it input password not inputted password so let me just fix that real quick so input password is not equal to password input underscore password equals input i'm really curious whether this will work we are going to have to check it out okay so enter password we are right here getting prompted to enter the password let's add one two three 
uh, hello, and then just world, uh, password, and if we just specify the correct password, which is hello world, I believe, we get exited out of this program, which means we specified the password correctly. So that is good. So basically that is all we actually have about the while loop. Of course, we are going to use it and uh, abuse it later on, of course, in the actual real programs that we are going to code. For now, this is just some of the basics. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye.